Number 16 against number 22 tonight from Cliff Keen Arena, Ann Arbor, Michigan. It is the 77th all-time meeting between the Boilermakers and the Wolverines. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups powered by Unleaded 88. And we start with Purdue. We've talked about Blake Moeller, but you add in a Caitlin Newton and a Shavana Catino, and that is quite the offensive threat. And it has been for the Boilermakers, who have actually won their last four going into tonight. A pair of 12 and 6 Big Ten volleyball teams squaring off this evening and for Michigan we have mentioned no May Pertovsky tonight with an undisclosed illness. Corey Crocker, who has been efficient, leads the Big Ten in terms of hit percentage. Got to be more efficient here tonight. The block could be focused on her without Pertovsky. Without Pertovsky, she's in a traditional middle role. So she's going to be in a rotation with the setter in the front row. So really only two attacker options and the block can shade towards those two attackers. Katarina Glavinvich and will be also an important role too. So keep an eye on her number 12 there wearing the Michigan white jersey here tonight. She'll get a lot more playing time without May Pertovsky. Two of the better serving teams we'll see here tonight as Jenna Otek gets things started. We are underway from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And right away they get the tax and they go to their meal ticket, Paige Jones. Quite a meal ticket Paige Jones is. She has so many shots, and there you see her hitting high off the hands. Her shots aren't limited to places on the court. She's not just hitting line. She's not just hitting cross. She's hitting different areas of the block's hands and getting great tools. That's Pertovsky that you saw there in sweats on the bench cheering on her teammates. And again, another swing there for Jones, but Purdue handles it. And off the touch and off the hands there is Grace Cleveland for the first point. We talked about Purdue having that three-headed monster of attackers, Catino, uh, Newton, Blake Moeller, throw Grace Cleveland in there. Really effective right side for this Purdue team. Part of the reason why Dave Shondell, and that one is down and impressive too. Paige Jones is going to get all kinds of looks. She had 38 total attacks in the last match against Michigan. Another shot here for Paige Jones. She's inside a little bit, and she does a thumb down cross court shot. So when she hits the ball, her hand rotates with her thumb down. That creates that really sharp angle. There's the swing and the point there for Caitlin Newton. But going back to Jones, it's always kind of interesting to me how the opposing coach looks at a player. Dave Chondell told us that basically she's she's got all the kinds of shots that you need in, in her arsenal. And, and he put her up against some of the better outside hitters in the league. Slide attack there. They got the, the touch. And Jess Robinson, who also can be really important, the freshman middle blocker for Michigan here tonight. I talked to Coach Mark Rosen about Jess Robinson, and we both agreed that she's quietly offensive. She's really sneaking in, coming in as a freshman, a lot of middles in the league. They're, they're there for blocking. Uh, they're, they're not really an offensive option, but Jess Robinson, quiet behind Jones, but really an offensive part, an offensive threat for this Michigan team. And Purdue responds there. Mark Rosen, of course, is the head coach for Michigan in year number 21 with the Wolverines. You see his win percentage in 427 of them. The winningest coach in Michigan program history. He's got in the Wolverines to NCAA postseason play 17 times, looking to get another one here this season. A team that's ranked number 22 in the country right now. Highest ranking for them since they were 14th in the country after week number one. <laughs> Trying to attack the left pin again. That was Wetterstrom with the swing. She'll get another chance at it. And dumping it down there is Moeller. Nice athletic play here from Moeller. Really, really reacting to the ball, pushing it down, but I'm saying a net violation, net violation, so the point there to Michigan instead of to Purdue. The slide attack there for Moeller. And back-to-back -back points now for the Wolverines as they take the 5-4 to four advantage. Back row attack. Serving it up, and Paige Jones can attack you from all areas on the court. Hammaker with the setup. 
Purdue here with the opportunity. And the swing there from Chin. Net violation on Michigan. Point's gonna go over to Purdue. Maddie Chin did not play Saturday against Michigan. 250 hit percentage though in the last four matches that she has played. Some new faces early here in this one as Moeller tried to do the short serve, didn't quite go the way she wanted. into tonight with a 20 and 7 overall record. They've won 20 matches now for the third straight year. Michigan just a win off of getting 20 this season. They come in with a 19 to 9 overall record. Chin gets blocked right at the net. Nice hip to hip block here. Corey Crocker working her feet, closing, and you see her lead hand push over back into the court. So when the ball ricochets off, it goes straight down. Mentioned two of the better serving teams of Michigan, not right up there in terms of uh, blocking statistics here this year as they're unable to handle that attack. And Purdue cuts the lead again to one. From the middle attack, and it's down and good there for Crocker. That's Corey Crocker's bread and butter, hitting right in front of the setter, quick attack. She hits both angles, pushes it through the block really nicely. Corey Crocker is a player that's had to deal with all kinds of injuries throughout her career. Going cross court for the point, Glavinich. We said that she would get a little bit more playing time and trying to make the most of it here tonight. Dave Shondell and his record with the Boilermakers, his 17th season. In fact, his whole entire coaching staff has been with him for all 17 years. That's awfully impressive. He has brought stability to West Lafayette in terms of this volleyball program, and he offered up a challenge to his team. Going back to the last match on Saturday against Michigan, they would love to be a top seed to host for the NCAA tournament. He offered this challenge to his team. Let's win out the rest of the season. That would mean winning the next three matches. They got one on Saturday, trying to do it again here tonight. Catino got a look at it, couldn't quite get it over. Much to the dismay of the head coach. Not the start that he wanted, and that's kind of been the, the pattern here from last Saturday, even though Purdue won three sets to nothing against Michigan. They got off to slow starts, really, in every set except the third. When we talked to Coach Shondell about the adjustments, this back-to-back -back schedule, that he knows what Michigan's going to do, and they just need to make their adjustments. One of the adjustments he emphasized was getting off to quicker starts, not letting Michigan take the lead so early on. Biggest lead of the set is here, 11-7. Natalie Smith with the serve here for Michigan and the swing for Newton. Caitlin Newton just powering it through the block there. Big Michigan block in front of her. Swinging right through it. Glavinich not quite over early enough with hands over the net. Caitlin Newton had a team high 14 kills against Michigan. Again, that cross court look is going for Paige Jones tonight. Another challenge of playing defense against Paige Jones is that if you try to adjust your defense, if you try to rotate your, your back row, if you try to take a different angle from the block, she can adjust. So oftentimes it's better just to stick with one, one strategy against her and that your team can build around it because she has so many different shots in her arsenal that she's gonna see what the block's doing, what the defense is doing, and make those adjustments easily. With that last kill, she's actually got 400 total kills. She came into tonight at 397 here for Paige Jones. But the fact that you're talking about the adjustments she can make, that's awfully impressive here for her sophomores. They go her way once again. Purdue handling it in the back row. But not that time. Jenna Otek got the first offering, couldn't quite get to the second. 
I like Mackenzie Welsh as an offensive setter. You see that little look. She sees the block. She sees Caitlin Newton going with Jess Robinson, and that's her key. I have one blocker. I can beat it and get a kill here. Part of a 7-2 to two score and run here for Michigan. That one hitting wide there for Grace Cleveland. Good start here for the home team. The Wolverines lead 15-8 to eight for our first timeout. Purdue off to that slow start that's been plaguing the Boilermakers lately. And you, you look at Emma Ellis, who's one of their, their outside hitters, and we haven't seen her yet. We're used to seeing her play consistently here for Purdue. Emma, the freshman, she's only hitting 197. Not bad numbers, 114 kills coming into this match, 1.93 kills per set. A, a pretty effective outside behind Caitlin Newton, uh, but Maddie Chin, we're seeing some action from her tonight, stepping in to fill those shoes. We discussed that these two teams are meeting for the second time in four days, and it, it was Mark Rosen who said it's like a chess match, but maybe that is one of the chess match moves from Dave Shondell on the Purdue side. Yep, from Horning. And Newton, with authority, lays it down. What I like about that kill is the set was not in system. It's a higher set than she wanted. Her approach is off. It's, it's a little slow. She's not going into it very smoothly, but then comes through with a huge finish. Slide attack there for Robinson. Newton again. Here's the up from Smith and right at the block. Moeller and Newton with the double block. Blake Moeller showing some discipline and patience. She doesn't even flinch at Jess Robinson, the decoy going up. Her eye is on the hitter, and she sees Wetterstrom coming in, times it perfectly. Blake Moeller, one of the redshirt seniors here on this Purdue side. What an up there from Horning. Moeller tried to go at it. She got the touch off of Welch. Take a look at the up here by Hornung. And then Blake Moeller and Mackenzie, Mackenzie Welsh jousting it out. Moeller gets the advantage. She had a match high 16 digs against Michigan, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. And a good reason for Horna. Last year moved into the libero spot in place of Brooke Peters about two thirds of the way through the season. And that serve is impressive to watch even though when it's in air. Very uh, Johnny Parker-esque. And unfortunate to see an error there because this is a rotation that Michigan really was able to take advantage of last time these two teams met. Paige Jones was able to get on a few really nice runs, getting Purdue out of system with that nice top spin jump serve. Each team now with a service error to start here in the first set. An attacking error there for Michigan. Paige Jones, as we have mentioned, just a sophomore. They went to her a match high 38 times against Purdue Saturday. She had a match high 15 kills in that match, and there's an ace. Six to one run here for Purdue. And after that timeout for Purdue, the Boilermakers have rallied a little bit about that. So the chess match now for Mark Rosen, he calls the timeout. And look at pre-match festivities. It's parent night here in Ann Arbor, not just for the seniors, but for every single family member that wanted to represent some of the Michigan players here tonight. A nice gesture for them, especially with Thanksgiving coming up tomorrow as well. It's a holiday weekend for everyone, right? And, and then you've got, of course, the Purdue fans who have made the trip on this holiday weekend as well. That, that gentleman has the Michigan hat and the Purdue sweatshirt on. A house divided. Maybe some confusion. <laughs> right. We've got senior night coming up on Friday here for Michigan. And as you have known and, and experienced, it's, it can be an emotional night sometimes. Sure is. I remember sitting at senior night not wanting to take my jersey off after the match. Wanted to soak in as much Michigan volleyball as I could. And, and I'm sure these women feel the same way uh, on, on both sides. A nice way to recognize the seniors and, and the commitment they've made to these programs. Another attacking error there for Caitlin Newton. And this Purdue team actually went through their senior night against Michigan on Saturday. Shavana Coutinho, Coutinho and Blake Moeller honored on that night. Very emotional night there for them. 
Muller was actually one who had about 20 family members and friends in attendance on that Saturday night. Kind of an interesting story. She's from Mississippi. You don't see many volleyball players from that state. Not known for, for their volleyball down there in Mississippi. Talking with Coach Shondell, he mentioned that she will go down in, in, in volleyball history as being maybe the first uh, great player, maybe the great player from the state of Mississippi. Moeller will take a seat here on this rotation, and from the back row attack, it's Paige Jones once again. She's got five kills here on the match. Talking with Mark Rosen, so the, Michigan is outside of their three middle system with Pertovsky out. So Corey Crocker's in the front row with Mackenzie Welsh, but she doesn't want to go behind. So they're going to run a lot of Paige Jones from behind the setter. Typically, you, you'll see a back row attack straight up the pipe, right up the middle. Look to Michigan to run that back row attack from behind the setter to get Purdue's block to spread out just a little bit. The first kill for Shivana Coutinho. How tough is that for a Michigan team to play in a certain system all season long as the Wolverines pick up the other point there from Wetterstrom? But how, how difficult is it for them to adjust here tonight? It, it sure is a challenge, but I, I, I think when you have a senior setter or, or, or a setter that's confident, that can dish the ball out evenly, run the offense, that it can still feel like home. So an adjustment for sure, but not something that should take Michigan out of their comfort zone. Well, May Pertovsky is, is one of the players that provides this balanced offense that they miss here tonight. Really five players, including Pertovsky, and kills per set are more than 1.75. Paige Jones, of course, leading the way, but you see Pertovsky there is, is third on the team in terms of kills per set this season. And Cindy, Sydney Wetterstrom, she goes, flies under the radar a little bit behind Paige Jones, but hitting 2.68 kills per set and, and playing six rotations for this Michigan team. Talk about stability. We've got that senior setter in Mackenzie Welsh, and we have Sydney Wetterstrom playing six rotations, being a constant on the court. Yeah, Wetterstrom, 10 of her 11 career matches with double digit kills are actually coming this year. So there was something about this season that, that she understands maybe a little bit more, but she's certainly taking advantage of it as well. Speaking of taking advantage of things, they've gone to Paige Jones 13 times. She's had 13 total attacks here in this match so far. Five kills here to start in this first set. And let's take a look at all of her different shots, all of her angles. You see high hands, you see that sharp thumb down, and there's seam. Blake Moeller gets caught in the middle. She's left with one block, takes full advantage. Five double doubles in the last eight matches. 45 times she's had double digit kills in her career, trying to approach that again here tonight. No secret that they're gonna go, they're gonna have a heavy dose of Paige Jones here tonight. <laughs> Off the block. And again, it's Maddie Chin trying to make the most of her playing time. And Michigan did what, what you want to see a team do. They got Purdue off balance, wasn't a great pass. Block was ready, standing in front of Maddie Chin, but a nice cross her body shot takes advantage of Glavinich there, not pressing into the court. Chin did not play, as I had mentioned, in, in the match against Michigan. She last played on November 20th against Rutgers. Played in a couple sets in that match and the finished job there from Crocker. Corey working hard in transition here. She doesn't have a ton of time to get off the net, doesn't get a full approach, couple steps, but she jumps up hard and able to swing through fast across her body. Off speed look, and it works for Cleveland, or does it? Yes. A little late whistle there. And Purdue was celebrating. I was already giving them the point. Michigan with a near pancake. Let's Michigan take another not look. letting it stop. Pretty clear that the ball hits the ground there. Again, trying to short serve Michigan right at the net. It's Cleveland, the solo block. 
Grace Cleveland really keying in. Oh, I like her eye progressions. You see her watch the middle, and then you see her look at Paige Jones. When you're a blocker, you're not necessarily looking at where the ball is. You're looking at your hitter. And she saw Paige take a step in, so she stays in and really attacks the ball. Purdue really good at the blocking game. Second in the conference in terms of blocks per set. Got a lot of options there at the net. A lot of effective options there this year. In fact, three players in the top 12 in terms of blocks per set this season. Back set there to Cleveland. She hits it wide. Another Michigan point. They're two away from closing out this set. We've got a timeout here on the floor and lots to talk about. As we mentioned, this is the last week of the regular season here in Big Ten play. And we've got all kinds of things to talk about coming up this weekend on BTN, the regular season concluding with colossal showdowns. Friday, Wisconsin looks to clinch at least a share of the conference title. They could get it outright with a win against Penn State. And then on Saturday, the Nittany Lions square off with the Gophers. So lots of Big Ten volleyball. You don't want to miss it, trust me. Powered by Unleaded 88 this weekend on BTN and, of course, the Fox Sports app. Well, Wisconsin, just with one loss, and that was at Ohio State here in conference play. They have been the team to beat, and they can close things out. This has been their season in review, and it's been awfully impressive. Don't forget, again, their story was they were 4-4 four and four overall record going into conference play. And coming up this weekend, they can clinch the Big Ten outright with a win at Penn State on Friday. So looking to take a Big Ten championship. Always fun to watch Big Ten volleyball. What we think is the best volleyball conference across the country, top to bottom. And again, they can clinch the Big Ten outright with a win at Penn State. And certainly this conference, and when you talk about Wisconsin or whether you're talking about Purdue or Michigan, these kind of matches that you see tonight, top 25 matches, they're going to prepare you for the NCAA coming up in December. These teams are fighting night in, night out, and that's exactly what they're going to see in the NCAA tournament. So when you talk about teams being battle-tested, everyone in the Big Ten is battle-tested, and they're ready for that tournament. Both of these teams here you see tonight, the service air coming out of the timeout, really well experienced in the NCAA tournament. It's the second air here for Michigan in this set and in this match. Welsh with the long setup. And the swing, it's down for Newton. She tried to go down the line. That time she went cross court. The set is inside here. So Newton's coming in, but Michigan's block doesn't respond. She's coming in so hard. She's going with her body angle, and Michigan is still taking some of the line. Tough play for Welsh to try to make. And Jones just pushes it over. Cleveland from the right side. You go Newton one time, you go Cleveland the other. This is the kind of offense that has been tough to stop when Purdue has been on a roll. They cut the lead here to one. Back here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, it was a slow start here for Purdue, but right now the Boilermakers trying to finish strong here in this set. You go back to their Saturday match. The second set, they had trailed 5-0. In the third set, there was one point where they trailed 16-12. And don't forget tonight, in the first set, they've trailed 15-8. Now they've cut it to one. We talked a little bit about Mark Rosen's chess match analysis when you have these back-to-back -back teams, but let's talk about Dave Shondell's don't have to reinvent the wheel. He's not reinventing the wheel here. It looks very similar to, to what they were showing on Saturday, but Michigan now with game point. Jones to serve. With that top spin, Moeller keeps it alive though, 24-23. Nice dish from Haley Bush. They pull her off the net, not a perfect pass, which sometimes can stop that middle from running that route and, and also stop the setter from, from wanting to, to set that slide, but still confident off the net, great location, and Blake Muller puts it down. Newton with the ace, and we're tied just like that at 24. Caitlin Newton's serve here as if it's falling off a table, rolling off a table. 
falls right in front of Natalie Smith there. Nearly got another one trying the dump. Won't have it. Oh, Michigan got it. Moeller thought she had a block, tries to place it just like that. Purdue takes the advantage the first time they've led since it was four to three in this set. Something that Dave Shondell really likes about this team is that they're gritty. They're fighters. He has a bunch of competitors in the gym, and they're going to come out when the lights are bright, and they're doing that here tonight. Now set point for Purdue. Michigan had a couple of set points just like that. Purdue rallies to win set number one. How about this kind of comeback? Trailing, Purdue, never out, never down. They come back and win set number one in Ann Arbor. Talk about a comeback, a seven to one run ended that set for Purdue to rally to beat Michigan in set number one, 26 to 24. Blake Moeller was important in that set and she's actually been important in the last six matches, part of the five and one team record. Look at her numbers. Coach Shondell says that she's a player that's going to show up for big time games. And a couple weeks ago, he sat down with her and he said, you only have a couple weeks left. What are you going to make of it? What are you going to make of your time here at Purdue? And uh, she's really risen to the challenge. Four kills, hitting 500 tonight, uh, and two blocks in that first set. Yeah, she's had to deal with some injuries really the first half of the season. She was beat up, you, you name it. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulders. Dave Shondell has, has tried to limit her in practice, saying that she really kind of practices once a week, doesn't really go through full activity all the time. But he, he told her, look, in, in the last, like four weeks ago, in, in the conversation that you were addressing, Beth, he said, your numbers aren't as bad as you feel like they are. And sometimes when you're not 100% healthy, you feel like maybe things are a little bit worse than what they are. Right, and you feel like you need to practice, you need to get reps, so you keep building that connection with your setter, Haley Bush. But She's a senior. She knows that connection. She knows how to play. Her focus is on, right now, getting her body healthy and being fresh and ready to make an impact for this team. Well, now Otec with the, with the ace and Purdue kind of rallying off of the momentum that they build in the first set. That's a four aces right now here for Purdue and Michigan somehow as, as just a heartbreaking way to end the first set. They got to find a way here to rally in set number two. What a shot! A nice shot, but some hesitancy there on Michigan's defense, not following the ball all the way to the line. Otek lining up Glavinich there, digging it straight up, and Caitlin Newton with the nice roll shot. Yeah, Natalie Smith a little bit late coming over there in the back row for Michigan. A swing again for Jones. Jones once again, there's a point for Michigan, the first of the second set. Overpasses are good times for momentum swings. So Michigan can build on this. Paige Jones, easy kill. Now let's get back to the service line and take over this, this set. Six kills already in the match. Yeah, players just kind of salivate, don't they, when they see oh, that yeah. ball coming over? Over to Cleveland. She was effective. And now six kills here in this match. But five of them really coming in the first set. Three-point advantage here early for Purdue. A better start for the Boilermakers and another swing, another kill for Jones. Paige Jones, so impressive. The, the pass is off the net. The block, no, Purdue's block knows that it's going to her. She has a wall in front of her and she swings up and over it, standing only at about, what, six foot one, six foot one and a half maybe, uh, really elevating. Shown some skill. Smaller but mighty. Paige Jones actually now has surpassed her freshman total in terms of total kills in a season. Last year she had 402. Now she's around the 403 range. You see what she's done this year. 3.85 3 kills per set this season. Michigan can't handle that, sir. Five aces now for Purdue. Grace Cleveland with the tough to, uh, float serve here. And what's great about that serve is it's in the seam between two players. And that's when you get players start to second guess each other and you get hesitancy and it leads to the ace. That's a little bit of the, the advantage or the statement 
Jess Robinson in Michigan needs to have a point on the slide attack. She had seven kills against Purdue on Saturday. Up there in terms of Big Ten freshmen, in terms of hit percentage. Jess Robinson having a good year. They'll go to her again, why not? But that time, the block was waiting and Caitlin Newton had read it all the way. Take a look at Caitlin Newton's footwork here. Perfect lining up with her hitters and then her hand placement also perfect over the net. Ball reacts straight down. Fourth block here for Purdue. Service line has been friend, has been a friend for Purdue. An eight to three advantage. The Boilermakers continuing to roll after finishing strong in set number one. They start set number two in a strong fashion. Purdue took the first set and leads eight to three in the second set. Serving and blocking have been key here in this match for the Boilermakers here so far. We saw the ace from Grace Cleveland taking advantage of the seam, and then Caitlin Newton follows up with another taking advantage of the seam, and here really getting in Michigan's passing heads. Serving tough, finding seams, making them second guess themselves. How about 13 of the last 16 points of the match have come towards Purdue's way, and now seven service aces in this match. Going for another. Oh, almost got it. Smith had the up there for Michigan. And Newton with the back row attack, and that one falls in. Purdue fighting really hard here. Caitlin Newton, not a perfect in-system back row set, but still taking a really aggressive swing. And Michigan's defense looking a little flat, not making aggressive moves towards the ball. Already seven kills. Newton's on fire. Eight aces for Purdue. and five of the eight coming in this set alone. Can Newton do it again? And a little too tight with the net that time. Still happy with that run though there. Well, it's a seven point edge for Purdue. And if Michigan can learn any lessons, they were leading by seven in the first set before Purdue rallied. And now that's Michigan's first ace. What in the world is going on? Michigan wanting to get in on this ace party here. Jess Robinson gives it another go. Cut shot again that time from Maddie Chin. And again, we have not, as we documented, haven't seen Emma Ellis yet here for Purdue. Nice swing from Maddie, but a really great setup there from Haley Bush. Deceptive set. Blockers didn't know where it was going until the ball left her hands. Up until tonight, Maddie Chin had only played in, in 36 sets this year. 46 total kills for the season coming into tonight. Ellis has hit 131 in the last five matches played after she had a really good match against Indiana on October 9th. Dumping it down. Good read there from Haley Bush. Nice to see Haley getting involved in this offense. Look how high she elevates there and then really throws the ball down. And now Michigan's blocker, middle blocker, Corey Crocker, knows that she has to stay when Haley is in the front row, that she has to stay with that blocker, with that, with that hitter. Has over 1,000 assists here for the season. And just tooling off the block again is Wetterstrom. Back to Bush. I just, I love the way that Dave Shondell has, has handled his, his sophomore setter. The fact that, that he pulled her aside and said, if she tries to chase that one down, won't get it. Pulled her aside and, and, and said, look, you, you're trying to run some, some veteran players here, but you, you got to watch more film. That's, that's the only way. That's where it starts. That's where you get better. Right. Naturally, she's not one of those players that loves watching film and studying. She's, she's a gym rat. She wants to be in the gym. 
and work. But when you're running an offense in the Big Ten, you have to be both. You have to be a gym rat, and you have to study the game. And she's really taken to that challenge, improving not just her volleyball, but also her relationship with her hitters, really serving as that, we use this analogy a lot, the quarterback of this Purdue offense. Well, Dave Shondell said that she's the no-nonsense kind of setter as she tries to set up Cleveland there. Very good up from Natalie Smith. Michigan gets the block and the tip there for Cleveland. Good Michigan reaction. Put, yeah, Michigan puts up a nice block, but Purdue is just being scrappy, not letting a ball hit the ground, really fighting, competing, uh, which, which Dave Shondell has said is one of this team's defining traits, being a group of good competitors. Jones right at the block. It's been so key here for Purdue. Five in the match now. Jenna Otek, one of the better servers here for Purdue, gets this rally going. Black again for the Boilermakers, back to back. One on the left side, one on the right side. Purdue's block reading so well. They are not shading over to anyone in this rotation. They're reacting to where the ball's going. Nice job of getting their feet there and pushing over. This set is getting away here from Michigan, so Mark Rosen has called the timeout to talk about it. Aces have been big. We've talked about blocks being big, but let's not forget about at the service line as well. Eight aces here so far. We're not even through the second set. How are they getting it done at the service line? They're going after seams, making players move, and then making them question each other. Where, whose ball is it? Is it mine? Is it yours? And that's when the ball drops, just like that. And on the stat sheet, serving shows up as an offensive stat, but I like to think of it as a defensive stat. When you're serving really tough, not only are you going to get aces, but you're going to get Michigan off balance, and that sets up your defense. So when Michigan is off balance, Purdue can read more likely where the ball's going to go, and that's contributing to their success on the block. Too. A battle of two top 25 teams here tonight, and also a battle for fifth place in the Big Ten when you see a couple of 12 and 6 volleyball teams here in conference play. Everybody right now chasing Wisconsin in the last week of the regular season, and it's still plenty of storylines here to talk about. If Wisconsin were to lose, that puts about four teams in play, mathematically still to win at least a share of the title. When we talked to Dave Shandell, he said, you know, we're playing for fifth place in the Big Ten. And to, to most people, that, that's not saying a lot. But for folks that know the Big Ten, that's huge. Finishing in the top five of the Big Ten Conference is a huge accomplishment uh, for these programs and for any program. Again, the quality of play helps everybody's RPI in terms of seeding going into the NCAA tournament. Coming out of that timeout, we'll see how Michigan adjusts right there. It's going to be hard when you give like a free ball to Caitlin Newton like that. Some scrappy play on both sides here. Natalie Smith with, with a nice up and then following it with a nice cover. Mackenzie Welsh is back row, so she can't go up there. Easy play for Caitlin Newton. Part of a 4 nothing run now for Purdue. Otek again back to serve. Jones that time goes Tulin. Jones bringing some power, taking advantage of that Purdue block that has been so strong tonight. She has so many shots, and some of her more impressive shots are her shots around and off the block. Doing a nice job of taking advantage of those hands. I mentioned that 45 times in her career, she's had double-digit kills. She's now one off of making that 46 in the block. You just can't get past it tonight. Lavinich looking to come in and make an impact for this Michigan team with Bertowski out, but Caitlin Newton, excellent footwork, following her hitter, going straight up and then attacking the ball. She's got four of the seven blocks in this match here so far. Been a part of a lot of them. Moller all alone, no problem. I think it's fun to talk about blocking as an active skill. Not as a passive just of taking up space as what it might look like to some, but it really is an 
active skill. And there you saw Blake Moeller being so active, actually going after the ball, attacking the ball from a blocking perspective. That was impressive. The quick attack right up the middle for Jess Robinson. Michigan got to find ways to get going here offensively. Now trailing by eight in this set. The differences here for Purdue attack-wise, seven errors in the first set and really clean volleyball. No errors this set. See what they do on this possession. That was tough there for Haley Bush to handle. That's one of those plays you try your best, but you can't save them all. Roll it under the net and take the next one. Newton that time with the setup and a giveaway point there for Purdue. Jenna Otek has taken the ball from a really tough angle there. It's coming across her body and not only across her body but from behind her. It's difficult to know in space where you're going to hit the ball. Well, Dave Shondella said Jenna Otek though can put it away. She had some of the better numbers her senior year out of the state of Missouri in terms of kills for a high school player. Moeller with the middle attack. Here's Jones again. Purdue gets it over. Dump down attempt for Welch. Newton with the off speed. Welch had a good reaction there. And of course, that was a great decision, but what a rally. Mackenzie Welch, that was kind of her own only choice on that play and caught Purdue on their heels. Purdue's been playing scrappy all night, not letting a ball drop, but keep going after him, keep going after him. You're gonna catch him off balance. That now forces a Dave Shondell timeout with a five point edge. A fun and entertaining rally here to watch. Purdue playing some really great volleyball, and we're talking about pretty error-free volleyball, but it's not all pretty volleyball. It's gritty volleyball. They're really working hard. Well, they were trailing by nine at one point in this set. Lots of hustle plays here. Natalie Smith really digging in. Jess Robinson not able to get out the way, puts the ball up. Then she gets back in with the block. Paige Jones swinging. Bush into the crowd. Mackenzie Wells trying to take a shot at it herself. An unusual tip from Caitlin Newton. So much hustle from both of these teams. And like I said, just caught them on their heels on that last one. Tough to react to the quick decision there from Mackenzie Welsh, who, as we have documented, her coach, Mark Rosen, feels like she's playing her best volleyball her senior season. Always beneficial to have a senior setter, but then when you can add the PS of, oh yes, my senior setter is also playing her best volleyball. He used the term dialed in. This year she's really dialed in. This is her offense and she's taking control. Also a team captain stands at 6-1. Out of the timeout, they go to Cleveland. Nine kills now for Grace Cleveland. Give her another ace. Nine total here in the match. Grace Cleveland started that hot service run from Purdue, looking to start it again. Six aces, six of the nine coming in this set. Bush to Moeller, who tips it over. Newton fires away. One of Caitlin Newton's strengths is that she can bring so much power without a huge approach. So there, the set is off the net. It's not the tempo that she typically runs. She has to slow her approach, but her arm comes through just as fast as if she was in full rhythm. Purdue's gotten three points out of the timeout now. You look at Caitlin Newton's numbers. Those are pretty good match numbers. 
let alone trying to close out the second set kind of numbers. The joust there at the net between Welsh and Moeller. Quick reaction play there by Mackenzie Welsh. She's front row, so she can turn around, put her hands up and joust. What you love to see out of your setter. Get physical there at the net. Free ball. That's what you like to see as a hitter, too. Wetterstrom with authority. And I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Overpasses are momentum swingers. Wetterstrom going up, killing it, getting her team behind her. Now looking for Paige Jones to get him going from the service line. Can't build off of that. And now Purdue two off of closing out the set. Nine service aces here so far for the match. Make it 10. A perfect 10. Back to back hot servers here for Purdue. Grace Cleveland and then Caitlin Newton coming in with that float serve, that move, so it's very difficult for the passers to get their body behind it. Unbelievable. She gets the air there, but she's got seven aces alone on the match here so far. Seven of the team's ten coming from Caitlin Newton. Purdue set point number two. Newton with the swing. Moeller trying to end it. Purdue does. So Purdue wins the first two sets in come from behind fashion in the first set and really leading start to finish in the second set. And they take it 25 to 17 in set number two. So we talked about Purdue playing pretty clean, air-free volleyball tonight, but it hasn't always been pretty. They're gritty, they're finding ways to get it done. Caitlin Newton been swinging hard all night, then throws in that off speed and catches Michigan on their heels. You know, we brought up the fact that they are playing without May Protofsky with an undisclosed illness. She is dressed but street clothes on the bench. How much do you think that's affecting Michigan here tonight? I talked at the top of the broadcast about how I didn't think it would be a huge factor because I think that as long as your setter is solid, as long as you have your six rotation players, uh, Paige Jones and Sydney Wetterstrom solid, that it wouldn't be that big of a change, but it really does seem to be affecting Michigan. I, I agree with Coach Rosen that the, the biggest issue is first ball contact, being able to pass. But I do think that this new lineup is playing into to some of Purdue's success here. Michigan trying to get comfortable in a traditional two middle system rather ha than having three middles sharing that responsibility on the court. Pertovsky is just a freshman, but she's one of four players that have played all of the sets coming into tonight. Third in terms of total kills and first in terms of blocks, and guess how they start that one. Jenna Otek with the ace on Natalie Smith. 11 aces here on the match. As they tried to feed a Crocker that time. Well wide and a 2 nothing edge here for Purdue. You see Natalie Smith trying to take up more court in serve receive, and that can be a way to handle very tough serving. You think more players would make it easier to, to pass a serve, but that's not always the case because that's when communication breaks down. So if you give one player more responsibility, they're more free to move and be confident in stepping up to pass the ball. Wetterstrom with the kill. Five of them here on the match here so far for Wetterstrom. Cleveland. Can't get it. And we're tied here at two. What kind of response will Michigan have here in the third set? Again, they have a seven point advantage in the first set. And side out again here for Purdue. 
Jenna Hornung passing nails there. I liked her form so much. As soon as the ball hit her platform, she froze right up to Haley Bush. She has all three options. Hornung now to serve here for Purdue. Can't handle that offering, but uh, Purdue keeps it alive. The swing and a powerful one. Lobinich. Playing in the place of Kurtovsky. And that cut shot goes wide with that time for Paige Jones. Some hustle by Purdue. Glavinich with a nice line shot. Jenna Otek laying all out, keeping the ball alive. As again, it was Hornung to actually just got enough of it, right, to keep it alive here for Purdue. Back row attack that time. Impressive there from Wetterstrung. Wetterstrung, a six rotation senior that can really bring some stability to this team. She has experience. She's been in this position before. Look for them to go to her when it really matters, when it counts in this set. Natalie Smith serving this time. A block there for Michigan. Just the fourth of the match. Slavinich's teammates showing her some love there for a nice block job. Well done. She's a transfer, a player from Croatia. She did play one year at Seattle University before she moved over to Ann Arbor. Tip from Newton. Slavinich. It's got to make her feel good. Glavinich saw some increased playing time towards the end of last year into the NCAA tournament. So this isn't a role that she's not comfortable with, working her way into that right side position, a really nice swing into the seam. Purdue gets the side out here to tie it. Michigan's last lead before that play was 24-23. You got to go back to the end of the first set. They had a couple of set points in that first set. to Jones on the left side. Good athletic move there for Purdue on the back end. Glavinich trying to go right down the line and Hornung was waiting. Cut shot not there. Glavinich getting hot on that right side pin. Showing a cross court through the seam shot and then there, nice down the line shot. 10 total attacks for Glavinich here tonight. She had a season high 13 against Tennessee Tech earlier this year. Slide attack for Moeller. Purdue is about to celebrate a little bit early that the block was there on that play. Paige Jones doing a nice job of tracking and staying with Blake Moeller. Thinking about Moeller, the slide attack. Instead, they go to Caitlin Newton's way. I like that you said thinking about Moeller, because I thought that too. It, Haley Bush doing a really nice job of being deceptive with her sets, not showing where the ball's going to go until it comes out of her hands. 14th straight match with double digit kills for Caitlin Newton. She's got 10, Grace Cleveland has 10. Set up there for Paige Jones, the finisher. Really impressive set. Doesn't look like much, but her ability to get her body around and squared and still push it all the way across the net is really something. And now she's back with this electric serve. See if she can get it to go. She's been quiet so far here tonight. Purdue handles. And there's a swing from Chin. Off speed. They play on. Point Michigan. Really a skilled shot there from Sydney Wetterstrom after the very nice pancake from Hornung there.
goes down for Matty Chin. Freshman outside hitter out of Michigan. Nice out of system shot. Not a great set. She's not in rhythm, but she's still taking aggressive swings. Rather than just sending it over lollipop from Michigan to have a free ball or a nice easy roll shot, she's still hitting a hard angle. I really like that shot. Very smart. Dave Shondell has used her a little bit sporadically here in the conference season. 23 total attacks a couple of times this year is her season high against Ohio State and against Kentucky. Six here tonight. Back row attack off the block there for Jones. I like this strategy from Michigan. So Mackenzie Welsh is front row. Jess Robinson likes to hit in front. She's got skill behind, but more comfortable in front. So behind the setter, they're going to run Paige Jones on a really quick back row attack. Haley Bush now back to serve. Each team, five service errors here in this match. Just one ace here for Purdue here tonight. How about that? We've seen some impressive shots, especially in this set here from Wetterstrom. Some elevation from Wetterstrom there. And she's got that big, really successful Purdue block in front of her, and she hits a hard cross angle around them. Free ball now for Michigan. Point to Purdue. Two point edge for the Wolverines and another service ace. Paige Jones isn't always in Michigan server seed. Even though she's playing six rotations, they'll pull her out of server seed so that she can focus on attacking, even from the back row. Otek this time. Yeah, from Horning. And Purdue gives it right back. The last time a Michigan opponent had 10 or more aces, Western Kentucky back in 2012. Doesn't happen that much against the Wolverines really a strength of this Purdue squad. Another point for Purdue, and they've cut it to one here in the third set. 12 aces here for Purdue. One of the key reasons that the Boilermakers are leading this match. It's a season high here so far. And I think it's important to remember that aces don't even tell the whole story. They have 12 aces, and that's incredible. But they've also been keeping this Michigan team out of system. So even when it's not an ace, they're limiting Michigan to one, maybe two options, and that sets up Purdue's defense, specifically their block, to be very successful. They had seven aces against Michigan last Saturday. Basically had that in one set here tonight. Hornung with the bump set. And then the easy blocking opportunity there for Michigan. Klavanich doing a nice job of staying disciplined, waiting, pushing over late so that Purdue doesn't have a shot, so that Caitlin Newton can't get it over. Here's Smith. Michigan again trying to build something. They are the first of 15 points here in the third set. They got the four point edge and looking to pick up the first set win. Michigan looking to take the third set. They got a four point edge here. But Purdue again came from behind to win set number one and in strong fashion leading set number two. And again, as we have talked about, 12 service aces here as a team. But our State Farm State of Success is Caitlin Newton who has seven of the 12 alone. That's a career high tonight. And close to Purdue's single match record, nine aces back in 1985. 
chasing that 1985 record tonight. An old record when you got to go back to the 80s. Purdue, one attacking error, as I had mentioned in the second set, they played really clean volleyball, but seven errors so far in this set, but Moeller, no error that time. She gets another kill. Nice way to react out of the timeout, and I like Blake Moeller's attitude after that. All business, ball goes straight down, and she's back ready to block. Interesting that Purdue actually has more attacking errors than Michigan here in this match. 16 to 11, joust there at the net. as Jones puts it down. She's elevating so high above that Purdue block, hitting right over them and still with enough spin to get the ball to drop. No sophomore slump here for Paige Jones as Mark Rosen tried to encourage her as well. There's the dump from Haley Bush. Her second on the night, keeping the Michigan block honest. When the setter, not all the time, but occasionally will throw down a ball like that, it does so much to affect the opponent's block. Every play from here on out, they're going to be second guessing, staying one second with the setter before they go out to a pinned block. Another joust at the net. A swing there for Newton. How about Robinson putting it away? She can get a hold of it, it's awfully impressive. And remember, she's only a freshman. So much physicality, working so hard off the net, back on for a full approach. Perfect timing, I like how she keeps the ball ahead of her, which is why she's able to bring so much power. Fourth kill of the night. Good pancake, what an up, Natalie Smith. But Michigan can't make good on it, Purdue gets the point. Oh, but that was pretty to watch defensively. Coach Mark Rosen described Natalie Smith as accountable. And what more do you want in a teammate? Someone who, if they're not having the great day, they know it's on them and they're willing to do whatever they can to make it up to their team. She's not blaming anyone else. She's not blaming outside factors. She has true agency of her play and takes control. Side out here for Michigan. Natalie Smith, too, really hadn't been a, a primary defender until this year here for Michigan, but making the most of, of a needed opportunity. Another one of those team captains, Mackenzie Welsh and Natalie Smith. Smith is a junior, Welsh is a senior setter. Oh, that, was, that was a no-looker from Haley Bush. A BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. How about the no look? <laughs> I like the no look. Again, keeping Michigan's block on their toes. Whenever Haley's in the front row, they're going to have to stick with her before they go out to block the hitters. Jones gets another look. To Cleveland. Point Purdue. Nice adjustment from Grace Cleveland there. The set's a little bit off the net, more off the net than she's used to, and she still takes a high snap. You saw her hand finish a nice high snap that keeps the ball down. Well, she's tied now. Paige Jones for the match lead with 12 kills. They were looking for the touch. Might be a challenge here. They got it. Corey Crocker trying to plead her case. I got the feeling that Michigan would challenge if they didn't get the call going their way. That's way long for Mackenzie Welsh. Hard for Michigan to kind of build lately back-to-back -back points here in this set. Otek again, she's a dangerous server. Welsh that time, feeding Wetterstrom. Wetterstrom really coming on strong. Nine kills, only two errors on 22 attempts, hitting 318, but Purdue here is challenging. <laughs> Dave Shondell right away, he had a good look at it. He was standing oh, right out. there. 
It's our first challenge of the match. Each team gets three of them for the match. Gets an additional one if we go to a fifth set. Mm, that looks out to me. Right, and I was looking to see if maybe there was a touch. I don't see any of the officials calling a touch. I didn't see a touch on Caitlin Newton there, and the ball looks pretty clearly out from this vantage point. And look at Shondell, he's got a, <laughs> just the bird's eye view. He's yep. looking right at it. And put his hand immediately up to challenge. And we're looking to see if any part of the ball touches any part of the line, then that would be in. It's clear that in the back row there was no touch. And as you had said, it didn't look like at the net there was any touch as well. And the ball looks out to me. Right now it's a 20 to 17 advantage for Michigan in this set. do the Macarena while we're waiting. <laughs> this Purdue team in good <laughs> spirits, no doubt. Pretty good when you get the away team actually going with the, the home team's music, right? There's some atmosphere there in Cliff Keen <laughs> Arena, that's for sure. <laughs> Everyone's feeling it. it. Looks like they've made their decision. Once this is this May of uh, Purdue, they wanted to keep dancing all day. And the call is reversed. So a good challenge here for Dave Shondell. Like I said, had a really good look at it. So now it's a one-point advantage here for Michigan. Purdue has two more challenges remaining. Michigan has yet to use one here tonight. to 18, they're working on the scoreboard a little bit. That's for the delay. How about this? Isn't it fitting? Another ace for Purdue, and we're tied at 19. Jenna doing a nice job of floating that seam between Natalie Smith and Paige Jones. Again, Paige Jones, not the most comfortable passer, especially when she's being called on to be an attacker, and Natalie trying to step in and take a lot of the court. Otek now with four aces, so between Otek and Newton, they've got 11 of the 13 here for the team for Purdue. She was going for number five there. Is she can handle it? But out of system. Newton, out of system swing. Chasing a towel, putting it away, Cracker. 20 points now for Michigan. Corey Cracker with a nice finish, finish, but some really nice play from Mackenzie Welsh, doing a great job of moving quick and out of system plays, bettering the ball every time she gets a chance. Cracker hitting at 625 so far in this match. They take care of the court here. Really effective hit percentage, not only for this season, but for her career. She's a very terminal player. When they get her the ball, good chance it's going down. There's Newton. Just inches away from getting that point. Michigan lets it sail out of play. They've got a two-point edge. We've got a timeout here in the third set. Nip and tuck between Purdue and Michigan. University of Michigan. Parent night here tonight, a senior night. Later on on Friday night but really a senior class of seven seniors that have contributed, all contributed in different ways here for Michigan. But Michigan trailing in, in this match here towards to Purdue and in terms of comeback fashion. The last time that they played each other was last Saturday. Purdue trailed in that second set on that Saturday match. They trailed 5-0. They trailed in the third set on Saturday. Also trailed in the first set here tonight and also trailing again to try to close out this match. Trailing by two here at the moment. Coming out of the timeout, now a one-point edge. A defining characteristic of this team, according to Coach Shondell, is that they're fighters. He really likes the way that they stay in matches and fight back. Oh, 
Hornung. Survey. Jones. Hornung with the up. Cleveland with the off speed. Crocker got a piece. Michigan showing a little fight of their own, not wanting to go away. Corey, Corey Crocker working hard on the block. Bush with the set up to Moeller. And here comes Michigan. Glavinich with the Nice, solid swing here. But look at the hands from Mackenzie Welsh. Fooling everyone in the gym, getting her a really great setup. Purdue's block is late, and she has an open net. Again, two of the top 25 teams here in the country, both trying to, to boost their NCAA tournament resume. So a win for Michigan here tonight. We'll put them at 20 overall. Both of them sit at 12 and 6 with these overall records. And you look at how tough this conference is. How about all these teams right now sitting in the RPI top 65? The thing about Purdue, you see Purdue sitting at an RPI of, of 23. Their goal this year, as we had mentioned at the beginning of the match, is to be one of the, the top 16 seeds to be able to host. And, and Dave Shondell feels like they'd have a really good chance if they could win out. So winning out meant winning at Michigan on Saturday, which they did, winning tonight and then winning their final match at Michigan State on Friday. I think that winning out shows that you're fi you're finishing strong, that you're, you're a good team heading into the NCAA tournament with momentum, and I really do think that matters. I think that Purdue has a chance to be one of those top 16 seeds uh, and, and to host, not only from winning out, but because of a big win against Nebraska earlier this season. I think that's going to go a long way. You talk to a lot of the opposing coaches across the conference, too. They feel like Michigan is, a, is an NCAA tournament team, and they're obviously ranked at, at 22 in the country. And, you know, you talk to Mark Rosen, he probably doesn't feel comfortable. No one feels comfortable about their situation, but they have built a really good resume here as well. A really good start, especially to the season for the Michigan Wolverines. They're really good here at home. 11-3 overall record in Ann Arbor. Coming out of that timeout. Bravinich gets another point. Five kills here on the match. And it's set point here for Michigan. The crowd can feel it. Wolverines close it out. Jones trying to do it. Oh, miscommunication there on the Michigan side. So a free ball now for Purdue. Opportunity for the Boilermakers. Jones gets the tip. Michigan wins the set. A six to one run to end the set. And we play on to set number four in Ann Arbor. Set point. Isn't it fitting? Jones to engine. The bench loves it. So does the crowd. We have more volleyball to show you here on PTN. Michigan takes the third set. So we are moments away here from starting the fourth set between Purdue and Michigan. Beth Karpiak, Lisa Byington with you, one of the key players here for Michigan, especially early in that third set with Sydney Wetterstrom. Sydney's a senior. She plays six rotations. She's a solid part of every aspect of the game for this team, but really came out hot in that third set, showing some elevation and some really sharp angles, bringing some power with the ball front row and back. Hit percentage, a huge factor too for Michigan. How does Purdue hit zero in the third set and still stay in it? It's their serving. They got three aces in the third set and, and that doesn't even show how many times they continue to get Michigan out of system off balance so that they could set up their defense. So Purdue struggling offensively, several errors in that third set. 10 kills, 10 errors, but still hanging with, that, with the Michigan team. So look for them to clean it up if they want to pull out this fourth set. Yeah, actually Purdue has 19 attacking errors here for the match to Michigan's 13. Overall in the match, Michigan actually has a better hit percentage as a team. Starting 
it out right here in the fourth set with an ace for Michigan. Again, Sydney Wetterstrom, a solid aspect of every part of this Michigan game, now showing it from the service line. A third ace here for the Wolverines. And Bush had to try to chase it down. Out to Jones. Right into the block to Jones again. That time she changed up her shot. Smart shot from Jones, and I like going back to the hitter. When the setter goes back to the hitter, gives him confidence, tells him, I know you got this next one, and she mixes it up with a nice roll shot. Michigan has won the last six points when you go to the end of the third set. The last seven points here for Michigan. It's just been a match of momentum. We saw Purdue kind of carry the momentum for the end of the first set, and another ace for Michigan. And let's talk give Purdue about a little taste of their own medicine. Talk about momentum. That's the type of momentum that Michigan can build upon. When you're getting the opponents to second guess what they're doing to the point where no one's going for the ball, that's where you can build. More volleyball when we come back. Around. Round and round we go for the Michigan fans. Suddenly some happier Michigan fans here in this match. A 4-0 advantage over Purdue. As we continue the fourth set. How about this? Make it 5-0 start for the Wolverines. Michigan has won 11 of the last 12 points. Newton calling for the touch, but the ball is called out. We've already seen one Purdue challenge that was successful. Looking for a possible touch on Paige Jones there on the block. And so the second Purdue challenge, touch or no touch, is what they'll look at. From that angle that we just showed, it didn't look like there was much of a touch. So closer to the net angle. When reviewing these challenges, not only do I like to look and see if I can see the touch, but I also like to look at the player's reaction. You see everybody on Purdue turn around and call for the touch immediately. It just doesn't look that obvious to me. Oh. As we zoom in, though, there you see it. You see her fingers push back. Paige Jones in her left hand. Another angle here from our BTN crew. And you're right, when not just one player, but several players are that emphatic about making a challenge. Right, I think that says a lot. Sometimes this is a momentum swing. In a set, Michigan right now is a 6 nothing advantage. Of course, the call on the court is no touch and the point to Michigan. I think it's a good challenge. I also think it's a nice opportunity for Purdue to take a little break and gather themselves. They're saying it's a touch. And so two for two with the challenges here for Purdue, Dave Shondell. Smart challenges from Coach Shondell. Scores now five to one. Shondell has one more challenge left. Mark Rosen has yet to use one of his three. Otek to serve. She's got four service aces here tonight. Jones with the swing. Cleveland puts it down. And now Purdue has back-to-back -back points. Cleveland's 13th kill on the night. Nice, solid right side attack. That's where she's most comfortable swinging hard cross court. The block, the ninth here of the match for Purdue. 
solid block from Purdue. And what's so impressive, impressive about their blocking scheme right now is they're not necessarily shading towards one hitter or the other. Giovanna Catino is in the middle reacting to every single play and getting her feet there. Service ace number 14. And Jenna Otek has tied a career high with five aces. A program record for service aces in a match for a team is 18. This is part of a 4 nothing run here for Purdue. Jones trying to go down the line. It's wide. It's out, and we're tied at five. That point, that point's a, a product of more great Purdue blocking. You're not going to stuff everyone straight down, but they keep giving themselves chances and force Paige Jones out of bounds. And remember, with that challenge, it once was a Michigan six nothing advantage before that challenge, and now Purdue has rallied to score the next five points. Calling four hits. Haley Bush wants to talk about it. You can hear the explanation there from the up official. So they're saying that Shivana blocked and then hit it again with one hand, which would count as the first touch. I think Purdue arguing that Shivana did not get any contact on the ball after the block when she went up with one hand. Another look here. So Shivana blocks. Does she get any contact here? If so, that counts as a hit. One of their first touches. Point stays to Michigan. Newton. She's got 14 kills. Time for the match high with Paige Jones on Michigan's side. How about that stat line? Seven aces, four digs, five blocks for Caitlin Newton. Bush feeding Newton again. Chasing it down was Jones. Point to Michigan. Purdue clearly thinking the ball is out. Lavinich, her sixth kill. Replay here. I don't see a touch on the block. And we're looking to see if the ball's in or out here. Close call, but it does look out from this angle. We had to go deep into the third set to get our first challenges, and then it, it feels like almost every other point. taking a look at something, you know, it's it's a time in the match where things mean a little bit more, perhaps. <laughs> Another reversal. So take the kill away for you from Michigan. Take the point away. Purdue now all out of challenges. <laughs> Got a feeling a few are coming up here for Michigan. <laughs> Quick attack. Robinson with the finish. Nice push, push set from Mackenzie Welsh there over to Jess Robinson. She's moving backwards. She's off the net, but she hears Jess calling, finds her perfectly. Jess makes a nice push for a good kill. Welsh with 32 assists here tonight. And with the swing. Welsh to Jones. There's the up from Bush. Another point for Michigan. Haley Bush with the first contact there, and when she's out, there should be a designated person that gets the second ball. Purdue, not quite sure who in that particular situation, and the ball drops. Cleveland with the swing. Side out here for Purdue. We're tied at eight. 
but credit Michigan, where it, it looked like they lost the lead in the first set. They lost momentum in the second set, and they had to rally in the third set and kind of dig deep to make this a match once again. Side attack, Robinson, and the up, Cormont. Robinson again, cuts out, point Michigan. Nine to eight advantage in the fourth. Chess Robinson working hard in transition here. Good up from Hornung. Give it to her again. Shows her different shots, cross court right in the middle. Looks like handling that serve. Robinson again. They see something with that. And another point for Michigan. Full serve. Take that. Paige Jones has the potential to get hot on that service line. She has a hard top spin jump serve that if your body's not behind it, you see Jenna Otek there taking it over shoulder. If your body's not behind it, that ball's gonna fly. Three aces for Michigan this set. It's coming at you with speed. Robinson puts it away. Michigan's rolling. Another tough serve from Paige Jones, that top spin jumper. Overpass, look at the focus there from Jess Robinson who's getting a shot in a traditional middle system. Tonight, Michigan previously running a three middle system where Jess would play middle for two rotations in the front row and, and right side for one. And now that's, getting three straight shots at middle. Yeah, that's a huge side out though, though for Purdue to get Jones out of the serving rotation. That was something Paige Jones went on a little bit of a run on Saturday. Right, Purdue wants to get out of that rotation quick. <laughs> Moeller at the net. And this is what the third set and so far what the fourth set has been about between Purdue and Michigan, a battle between Fifth place here in the Big Ten. Caitlin Newton, remember, she's got seven aces tonight. That's a career high. The school record for a player in a match should be nine. She's got an error. You know, when you're serving as tough as Caitlin Newton is, you have to expect certain errors. There's no reward without a little bit of risk. It was a tight ball at the net, and there's the finish again from Wetterstrom. Some sloppy play on both sides. The, the pass, I don't want to say sloppy, out of system play from both sides the past couple points here too. But then you see Wetterstrom take this out of system transition ball, better it with a really tough swing. Block was nearly there for Michigan. How tough is that, though, for, for Welsh to serve it up to Wetterstrom? Welsh is a really talented setter. It's not always apparent to, to see how good a setter is because they're not flashy, they're not getting all the kills. But what you see from Mackenzie Welsh is that she betters the ball so well. When she's out of system, she can put her, her hitters in places where they can still take really solid swings. And Crocker is one of them who's benefiting from that. Dump down. Crocker again. Roll shot that Michigan handles. Jones. Following Purdue in the net. Got a couple of errors like that for Purdue. In this set. It's a five point edge now for Michigan. Sailing out of play. The seventh error for Michigan. And 
Nancy Welsh played in 129 matches in her career. The block is there. Catino has been quiet until that point. Such fast twitch reaction here from Shivana Catino. Look at her loaded and ready to go. A very fast set to Corey Crocker, and she's up in the air, able to push over and get the ball down. And we see Emma Ellis in for the first time here for Purdue as Michigan has an answer. Mackenzie Welsh continuing to move up the chart. She's flirting with a 40 assist night here. And she is now a third in Michigan history in terms of career assists. You know Lexi Zimmerman a little bit. Lexi Zimmerman was my setter for two years, one of the all-time Michigan greats and a very dear friend of mine. Paige Jones. It is an 18 to 13 advantage here for Michigan. Purdue's got to call a timeout. Paige Jones leading the way. We knew she would get her chances. They've almost gone to her 50 times here tonight. Her 16th kill is a big one. Paige Jones, 17 kills tonight. Double digit kills, you can see that. Maybe she's on a little bit of a streak and coming out of that timeout. Always interesting to me what they kind of draw up out of that timeout. I like that play. Grace Cleveland out of the middle, typically hitting on the right side pin, but they run that second tempo ball. So it's not super quick, which gives her a lot of angles. She's off the net. She can see the whole court, and she really brings some power. Dave Chandel said teams have tried to target Cleveland, make sure they had two blockers in front of her. And now that Purdue is a little bit healthier, she gets a little bit more of an open look. How about Michigan and Jones again? Michigan really picking it up offensively this set, and a lot of it due to Mackenzie Welsh. There she's running halfway across the court and still puts Paige Jones in a position where she's taking an in-system, very solid swing. with number 19 on the night. Powering it through the block, Caitlin Newton with no option there and the ball flies out of bounds. The 77th all-time meeting between these two schools, Purdue has the all-time edge. And the win on Saturday, that snapped a three-match losing streak to Michigan. Wolverines trying to get it right back tonight. These two teams go back to back and play each other twice in four days. As Cleveland can't get around on it. Oh, hold on. They got to see they got the touch. So it will be a point for Purdue. And when we say that we haven't had a challenge yet from Mark Rosen, He's got three of them left in this match. Looking for a touch on the block or either there from Natalie Smith. Mark Rosen will use one of his three challenges here to challenge the touch or the no touch. We saw Purdue be successful with its challenges here tonight. We'll see what Michigan is able to do. What's their best bet at the net? It looks, I don't see any finger movement in the last challenge. We, we clearly saw Paige Jones, her hand be pushed back from the ball. I don't see that type of movement. I don't see a change in the trajectory of the ball. But again, the call on the court is that there was a touch. So we're it looking for enough. some pretty indisputable evidence right. here to show that there was not. And it, it, it still is close there. On the last review, it actually also involved Paige Jones. I think that was a little bit more obvious. You saw her left hand kind of go back. That's just not the case here on that oh, angle. It this looks angle, clearly, clearly no touch. Clearly no touch. Great angle we have there. 
We'll check again to see if Natalie Smith here. That's what I was wondering a little bit as well. Touches in the back row. I don't see anything definitive there either. Pulling her hands yeah, back. Yeah, you see Natalie Smith trying to get out of the way. And time to play more volleyball. Lead here for Michigan, and Cleveland has the answer. She's got 16 kills on the match. So much power from Grace Cleveland. She has a big, strong approach, and she's really able to build some momentum into her swing. Cleveland hitting 278 tonight. She's been hitting 368 in the last 10 matches. A nice little hot streak. Free ball now for Purdue. To Moeller, who's been quiet. Should they go to her more? I think so. Moeller only seven kills on the night on 17 attempts. She's pretty terminal, hitting 235. Finding her more in the middle is going to open up their pin hitters. Cleveland, Clayton, eight to have better looks at the court. Eight kills tonight. She had eight on Saturday against Michigan. They go to her again. Middle attack. Robinson. Here's Jones. Point, Michigan. Robinson with the killer swing there in transition. Nice defense from Purdue, and, and Paige Jones gets a second chance, finds the blocker's hands. Gets a nice kill with a touch. A 20-kill night for Paige Jones. Handling it is Natalie Smith to Jones again. Double block, waiting. So when you have 20 kills on the night, blockers start keying in on you. And there you saw Blake Moeller take a step to her right, knowing the ball's going to Paige Jones, and they're hip to hip, forehands over the net. 52 total attacks tonight for Paige Jones. Couldn't get a handle on it. And there you see Blake Moeller completely leaving Jess Robinson, letting Caitlin Newton handle her and Mackenzie Welsh one-on-one, -on -one, doubling up on Paige Jones, trying to force her into the block. Dave Shondell had said that they didn't try to adjust their blocking scheme on Saturday against Paige Jones. Michigan, what an answer. But some 
adjustments here in the fourth set against Jones. And it's Michigan with the momentum. And the best server now serving. Here's Paige Jones. Purdue trying to get out of this rotation. Robinson and the block from Oler. Nice discipline blocking footwork there from Blake Moeller. We're talking about how she's taking steps towards Paige Jones on the outside, but still reading. So there, she's staying with her hitter, Jess Robinson, gets off the ground fast and pushes her hands over for a nice block. First block of this set here for Purdue. They got 12 on the match. Emma Ellis getting her first playing time in this set for Purdue. Tried the tough, couldn't get it. Mackenzie Welsh knew exactly what she wanted to do with it and couldn't execute it. Frustrating for Mackenzie Welsh there. Nice defense from both teams in that rally. She's looking to finish it herself. And just a, a, an unexpected error. Michigan this time calls the timeout. couple of ranked teams here across the country, number 16 against number 22. And when you're talking about the Big Ten, you know that they're going to have a handful of teams that are ranked. Right now, there are seven teams ranked in the current ABCA poll. But we go back to the beginning of the season. Nebraska was up there as well. And we scroll through kind of week to week. And we got that consistency there between the 5, 6, 7, and 8 spot. Nebraska, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Penn State. Yeah, these great teams in the Big Ten really battling it out against each other, but staying in that top ten in the nation, really showing the strength of the conference there uh, and how we stand against the best of the best. Yeah, four of those you can see consistently in the top ten, really in the, in the top eight across the country. And those teams, of course, as well, a really good shot here to, to host when it comes to the NCAA tournament kinds of success when you talk about the Big Ten Conference in terms of projecting it into the NCAA tournament. I want to remind you, too, on the Fox Sports app, you can watch Northwestern and Illinois. That's already underway. Another ranked team here in Illinois playing down in Champaign. A little rivalry matchup. Jacqueline Quaid going back to serve for the Illini. And once our match is complete, we'll get you out there to Champaign. Mike Monaco and Michelle McMahon with the call in that one. We still have more volleyball to finish here between a couple of ranked opponents, Purdue and Michigan. Wetterstruck. A little extra behind that swing. Welsh again to Wetterstruck. Oh, Moeller trying to get a little too cute. There's certain outsides in the Big Ten that I like to call bangers. Women that can just go up and bang really hard every time. And coming into this match, I wouldn't have classified Sydney Wetterstrom as a banger, but she's really proven me wrong tonight. She really can bring some heat. We are going to play five. Michigan has come from behind to tie this match. The Wolverines win it 25 to 20. And we'll play on. Why not? Number 16 versus number 22. We've got more. Purdue took the first two sets, and Michigan responded, taking the third and the fourth set. So the fifth set, here we come. And how about service aces have been the story between the two teams. Almost 20 combined. We've got 19 total here tonight that we've watched. Caitlin Newton and Grace Clayton, Jenna Otek getting in on it for Purdue as well. Finding those seams in the Michigan server, Steve, going after Paige Jones and then going after the folks that are trying to help Paige Jones out. Natalie Smith here trying to step in. And we dubbed this as, as BTN Block Party Night. But it's coming up all aces here tonight. Who needs blocks when you've got aces? Yeah, says the middle blocker. <laughs> I like middle hitter. Which you were pretty good at, by the way. Oh, thanks. Lisa. Yeah, the stats prove it. <laughs> Aces tonight, Purdue with 14. Again, the school record is 18. 
in a match. The five set match records, Purdue four and one this year and Michigan is three and three. They've played their fair share. The first point goes to Purdue. Caitlin Newton. Both teams with experience in fifth sets, so they know that coming out fast is so important. Purdue, having a history against Michigan of starting out kind of slow, really needs, if they want to stay in this match, to come out strong, be the first to eight. Newton again. Powerful. Two-nothing advantage. I thought in the fourth set, when Purdue was out of system, they weren't able to get really solid swings. Here you see them out of system, Hornung to Newton, and she's still taking a swing as if she's in system, bringing full power. The block for Newton. It's an all Caitlin Newton fifth set here so far. Caitlin Newton getting pumped up with this solo block here. Nice footwork out to the pin sealing off the net with her lead hand. One block and a couple of kills. She's got all three points. Has accounted for all three points. <laughs> to Paige Jones. Michigan with the answer. Paige Jones with her 21st kill of the night, powering through this Purdue block. Just catching the smallest of seams between Moeller and Clayton. 21 kills, as you have mentioned. 55 total attacks here for the night. Newton again. Four points to Caitlin Newton. And what are the adjustments now for Michigan when you got a hot hitter like that? Apologize for the technical difficulties there. Michigan just picking up the second point. A four to two advantage. Here in the fifth set. Back set there to Moeller. What a block. Robinson and Jones there for Michigan. Skilled blocking there from Paige Jones because she's used to Blake Moeller going all the way out to the pin. It's a shorter set and she stops and gets her feet planted and goes straight up. One point advantage. Cleveland got the swing. Jones again. You just know it's going number one's way. And still, she continues to put up the points. She has so many different shots. Even when there's a huge double block against her, she's finding that little seam, that hole between the two blockers and forcing her way through it. Wide there for Purdue and Caitlin Newton. It's Newton against Jones in this set. Newton again. The up from Annalee Smith. Here's Jones's turn. Roll shot. Jones! Wow! So fun from Jones. She's been hammering it, hammering it through that block seam. So here you see her take something then off of it, and she shows it so late. So she catches Otek on her heels, and she reaps the rewards or the benefits with that over.
And they reversed it. So the score is tied at 5-5. Five, five. Paige Jones can't believe it. Dave Shondell is a perfect four for four. Guess who will be serving? It'll be Caitlin Newton. Seventeen kills on the match here so far tonight. To Robinson. Guess who's there? Emma Ellis. And gotten a whole lot of playing time here tonight, but that's a big play. Emma Ellis getting some love from her teammates there for coming in, like you said. Not a lot of playing time tonight, but making an impact where she can. First time we saw her was in the fourth set. Challenge Canales again. She goes back to back. Purdue's block is so skilled. Look at Emma here. Look at her footwork. So quick, getting all the way out to the pin, sealing that line, and then also taking cross court. So her lead hand taking the line, sealing it away from Jess Robinson, and then her trail hand taking away that cross court shot. Couple of blocks in the last couple of plays. What a play there, getting an over horn on. Robinson with the swing. Michigan picks up the point. Paige Jones with the jump serve. And the slide attack, it's Moeller. Smart decision from Haley Bush. Usually when a setter is pushed that far back, they're not going to run a slide. There's not a ton of room on the net for, for her to set that slide to, to Blake Moeller. But she trusts Blake. She gives her a nice tempo, and Blake comes through with a strong swing. The slide attack was awfully effective for Purdue against Michigan in terms of Blake Moeller and using Shivana Catino, who's actually been kind of quiet here tonight. Just a couple of kills here for Catino. But they used that approach against Michigan really effectively on Saturday. Again, you can get involved in the conversation. This is a double header of volleyball here tonight on the Big Ten Network. You can hashtag BTN Block Party. Got a good one happening at Cliff Keen Arena. I couldn't agree with you more, Kevin. Michigan versus Purdue in a classic volleyball battle. If you use the hashtag and our match or the match that will bring you to Illinois Northwestern, we might show your tweet here on the air. Come on, ladies, everyone needs to take a page out of the Jones playbook. How about the Paige Jones slam on from a Michigan fan? Speaking of Paige Jones, yeah, 23 kills. She's approaching tying perhaps her career high. She had 26 kills. A sophomore, a six rotation player, and, and as we have talked about, just standing at 6-1. Top performers here in the fifth set, in particular, Caitlin Newton and, and Paige Jones, but in the match total, you see their numbers here tonight. And Paige Jones, so offensive and really at a, at a high level of efficiency, hitting 226 for an outside hitter that's getting as many swings as she is, 62 swings, is, is really impressive on the offensive end for her. Dave Shondell, as we had mentioned at the beginning of the match, he watched her play the AAU Nationals, and, and he didn't know if she was big enough to play in the Big Ten. He's convinced that she is one of the better outside hitters now. 6'1", 6'4", 6'6", whatever. She puts up big numbers as an outside hitter. And those are the numbers that count. Michigan coming out of that break. Cuts the lead to one. Natalie Smith with a nice reaction there. Good cover, low in defense, ready to go. Keeps the ball in play. Here's Robinson with the serve. Feeding Ellis. They're going right back to Ellis again for the second time. Michigan can't put it over. And Ellis with some big points in the fifth set. 
That's the response that you want to see from a player. Hadn't played the first three sets of this match. A couple of blocks and one kill in the fifth. Back row attack for Jones. Two off of tying a career high now. Such a smart play for Paige Jones and this Michigan offense to run her out of the right back. Instead of that classic pipe out of the middle in back row, they run her out of the right back, forcing Purdue's block to spread out. Go to the middle attack. How about this rally? Purdue gets it over. Jones again puts it down. 24 kills on the match. Moving around in the back row, hitting out of the right back, now coming straight out of the pipe. You see Johnson in the middle there going with Corey Crocker and then having to find that quick second tempo ball out of the back row. So impressive for the sophomore. When we talked to Mark Rosen about expectations that he has for Paige Jones as she come into the end of her, her regular season, sophomore year, had a great freshman campaign, a great sophomore campaign. You know, what's next for Paige Jones? And he says she hasn't had to be in a leadership role. There's other women on this team that fit more naturally, but next year he's so excited because he thinks this is gonna be her team and she's gonna fit into that leadership role so well. I'm gonna accelerate that tonight because this is her team here tonight and this is her stage and her role. She's got 24 kills. They've gone to her 65 times tonight. Yeah, tonight they put her on the accelerated leadership track. <laughs> Mentioned she's a, approaching career highs. 67 total attacks is her career high. 26 kills is a career high. And those numbers, she's two off of each of those. And we talk about her stature being on the smaller side for some of the big time outsides in the Big Ten. And she can hit over the block, that's for sure. We've seen her do it tonight, but what, with that shorter stature, she's developed these shots through and around the block that are just so impressive, even when she has a huge, very effective Purdue four-handed block in front of her, she finds seams, she finds ways to tool it off of them. So many different shots in her arsenal. Her fifth career 20-plus kill night tonight. We're tied at nine. Purdue and Michigan. Ellis right into the net. Michigan takes the advantage. They've gone to Ellis late in this set. We saw JL Johnson, number 18 for Purdue, play in the last couple of points for the Boilermakers. Back row attack. We have seen Caitlin Newton time and time again tonight. And I heard Mark Rosen announce to his team, watch the back row. He saw Caitlin Newton lining up. The team was ready for her to get that ball, but still too much power to handle. Again, as a reminder, it's the first of 15. You got to win by two in this fifth set. Lavinich with a very solid swing from the outside. She's typically on the right side, but a lot of credit to Mackenzie Welsh there. So deceptive, keeping so many blockers on her, and that half a second delay gives an open net to Glavinich. Glavinich playing in the place of May Pertovsky. Again, out with an undisclosed illness. She has not played here tonight. Back and forth we go. The 19th kill here for Caitlin Newton. Hornock to serve. It's a deep one all the way back to the deep row, or the back row, and the finish put away from Crocker. Natalie Smith coming through with a great three-point pass, meaning Mackenzie Welsh has all three options, and she throws it up to Corey Crocker with one blocker. Corey's seventh kill on the night. Here's another look for Newton. Yeah. 
tied at 12. Nice Purdue block, and as the, the ball skates along the net, Michigan not able to pick it up. Glavinich with the swing. <laughs> Robinson, statement. And we should remember that Jess Robinson is only a freshman. So big, so physical, working so hard in transition. The upside on her is just unimaginable. Double digit kills here in this match. Joust at the net. Tied again. What entertainment we've had in Ann Arbor tonight. Final week of the regular season. Final two matches of the regular season for both of these teams. Here's Welsh. Keating Jones once again off speed. You bet. She's tied a career high at 26 kills tonight. Purdue's got to call the timeout. Match point for Michigan. And again, this is the first of two matches that we'll show you here on BTN. Our other one is already underway in Champaign, Illinois. A rivalry matchup in the first set. Fox Sports app is where you can find that right now. Illinois and Northwestern will get you out there as soon as this one is complete. We started the, the night talking about Purdue and, and Michigan. They're both tied in, in fifth place in the conference. We talked about the importance of, of building up a resume, of building up a win. From Michigan's side, they'd love to put another ranked opponent in terms of the win column and, and their resume, Purdue would like a better than 50-50 chance of, of trying to host in the NCAAs. And in Dave Shondell's words, he felt like if they if they win out, they have a shot of, of doing exactly that, finishing as a top 16 seed. And I like what how Coach Shondell put it to us that he proposed that to him. You know, if you win out, you have a good shot at, of hosting. And, and our record when we're hosting is, is really great but not as a challenge, just to put that out there and let them know they're a great team and they're playing well. But just so you know, this is also on the horizon. That's right, both Michigan and Purdue, top 40 RPI. And you saw some of the, the seven top teams there in the Big Ten Conference and how highly they ranked for their RPI. Ooh, what a serve though to try to end it and we play on as Moeller ties it here at 14. Couldn't ask for a better serve on game point from Paige Jones, really nailing it. But Marissa Hornung, strong in there. Such a solid platform, gets her whole body behind the ball and stays really still, popping it straight up. This is how nip and tuck the fifth set has been. We've been tied at 10, tied at 11, tied at 12, tied at 13, now tied again at 14. Robinson. Match point again for Michigan. Jess Robinson with some power behind the setter, bringing it in front of the setter and behind. She's really an offensive threat all over the net right now. Keeping it up, keeping it in play as Welsh. Second match point from the back row. Caitlin Newton once again. Swing after swing after swing, and now a 20-kill night for Newton. And on these tough game point plays, that's who you want to go to. Your go-to junior hitter with a lot of confidence. Corner kept that alive for Purdue, but Michigan gets the point. 
match point number three. And it's the senior playing in her final two home matches of her career, Mackenzie Welsh to serve. We're tied again. Caitlin Newton not going to lay down, not going to let this match end for Purdue. She's swinging hard, front row, back row. Wherever she is, they're getting her the ball. Tied at the net. Tight setting opportunity. Ravinich. Making the most of her opportunity. I love the intensity that I'm seeing from both sides at this point in the match. You're not seeing that hesitancy that you can sometimes see in a fifth set game point. You're seeing both teams really go after it. Match point number four for Michigan. The block got a piece of that. Here's Newton, who got the touch. Stone cold is Caitlin Newton keeping Purdue in this in the fifth. The swing is handled by Purdue. Glavinich again. Time to be up by Haley Bush. Goal shot by Newton. And it's Newton again. She's got all the tricks in her bag. Newton doesn't get the kill with the roll shot, roll shot so she makes up for it on the one-on-one -on -one block. So active, really attacking the ball with her lead hand and bringing it back into the court. We talked about Purdue in terms of their serving and their blocks being so important here tonight. 31 points tonight, 14 aces. 17 blocks here for Purdue. So 31 of their points this evening have talked about what we had, we were highlighting early in this match as being key. They have a one point edge here and it's the first Purdue match point. And it really follows that their block is doing so well because their serving is so effective right now. When you serve tough, you set up your block for nice, solid positions. But also, their block is doing so good in transition. They're reading their hitter so well, especially difficult with Mackenzie Welsh, who, who can be very deceptive with her sets. Purdue is still finding good spots and going after the ball on their block. I'll tell you what, it is hard to get a handle on who has a handle tonight. You know, first you think, oh, it could be a straight set win here for Purdue the way they, they started this match took the first two sets. Michigan responds, and then they have several match point opportunities here in the fifth, and now here we have, we're sitting with Purdue's first match point opportunity. They go to Jones. Big play, big answer from the big player, and she's got a new career high. So much power uh, during these match point situations. It's so easy to say, I'm not gonna be the one that makes the error, but these players are saying, I'm gonna be the one that gets a kill. Cleveland gives Purdue its second match point. She'll go back to serve. Here's Jones. Can Newton finish it off? Newton again. Ends it. Purdue. 
an entertaining, exciting, electric match, and the Boilermakers come out on top in five. Twenty-two kills for Caitlin Newton, who ended up being the story for Purdue in the fifth set. 